since I've been organically fertilizing this lawn, I've discovered so many changes. And one of them this year is this guy. And I don't mind if he crawls through my grass as long as he stays off of my veggies. Pretty cool looking. He's got kind of a blue horn on the end of him. Well, you're back kind end. of cute. Yeah, he is. You're a cute little wormy worm. I hope no birdies eat you. And he's got a yellow face. Uh huh. All right, I just want to show you guys a little update with the uh, tomatoes. If you remember, this is the raised bed that I built and tried to make look nice. And on this side, we had the giant Belgium, which for a while was bigger than the uh, pink ox heart. But look how well the pink ox heart is done. You know, i got to say, this is July 5th. And... Last year when I grew my tomatoes, I grew them in pots actually like this. This is a little bit bigger. I grew my tomatoes in pots like this last year. And it took until September before I had a tomato even come close to the rafter. Um, this year, July 5th, because I got them out here early, I put the little mini greenhouse plastic around here so that they could survive the cold weather. Um, and I'm going to take you up close and show you what we've got going on here. This first one is the beefsteak. And look at that. We've got a nice big beefsteak tomato in there. We've got a couple more coming in. Actually, quite a few clusters. We've got some coming in up here, right there. Lots of flowers. The boxcar willy has a few coming in. Nothing worth showing yet. That was the last one to be planted out here. If you remember from my previous videos, my boxcar willies, I killed them in the freezing weather. So the boxcar willies the youngest. But I have a pink ox heart here. It looks like it's just about to turn color. It's getting pretty big. And I have some other clusters of tomatoes back in there, which you can't see you can clearly see these ones now this branch I'm hoping survives right here yesterday I noticed that it uh, because of the weight of all the tomatoes it, it kinked over so I now have it tied up so that it won't break then you come up here further this pink ox heart really puts out big clusters of tomatoes and I've got those tied up now and even up here once we get to about five, five feet I've got clusters coming in I am really happy with the pink ox heart I don't know what they're going to taste like but as we get close to the top I've got loads of flowers loads of flowers those are going to need all tied up for sure all right now the giant belgium has done pretty good um the main problem i have with the belgium you know as you can see down here i've got a nice little cluster but i had some tomatoes that were starting to get quite big um my issue with the giant Belgian is how easy the tomatoes crack. 
So it's a pretty prolific plant. It's doing pretty well. I don't know how much yield I'll get off of it because the tomatoes seem to be really susceptible to cracking. Now I haven't been able to get my Oyas in here yet. Um, I will need to do a, a video update on that. So I'm still working on the Oyas which should help maintain a constant moisture level in there and perhaps uh, prevent the cracking. But I'm not having any problems with the boxcar willy, the beefsteak, or the pink ox heart. The only ones that are cracking out are the giant Belgiums. So I don't know whether I'm going to grow them again now, next year or not. They better taste pretty damn good for me to put up with their, uh, their cracking. Uh, anyway, the cherry tomato is doing very well. If you remember, I had the videos a while back on the banana tree, or I'm sorry, banana plant, and uh, the spider mite incident. The spider mites have been totally eradicated. They were gone long ago, and I finally got the banana plant outside. It's now only getting down to about 50 or so degrees at night, so we are doing pretty good with the uh, with the temperatures. So I decided to go ahead and put them out here, and I am really happy with this fig tree in particular. This is the uh, French uh, fig tree, and the other fig trees are doing pretty good, but not wide as well okay yeah, I'm gonna, oh one thing I really want to show you which I don't know if you'll be able to see this tree really really attracts pollinators big time uh, one thing that's been really nice about this tree is it's it's a beautiful tree to have, especially right next to the pond here. It has a two-tone leaf color. It gets these dark green leaves, and then it gets this second leaf, which is a nice yellow, lime green, more of a yellow color, I guess. So it gets these two-tone leaves, and then later it puts out all these little pollen flower type things. But it's absolutely beautiful when it gets these two-tone leaves in the spring. It's still beautiful. And when it puts out the pollen, watch out. The bees are just, you may not be able to see them, but the bees are everywhere. Everywhere, all over this tree. Okay. It's July. The corn is way above knee high. Compost pile is doing really good. I dug in there into that compost pile the other day put a little compost around the pumpkins pumpkins are doing fantastic I decided to trellis them rather than let the vines kind of go everywhere I wanted to trellis them that's really cool sugar snap peas I've been harvesting sugar snap peas the past couple of days they're fantastic don't know how long they'll last because I I planted them in direct Sun so I've been harvesting the lettuce. Uh, this is the Little Jim lettuce that uh, Ray from the Praxis uh, channel sent me. Everything else, peppers, banana peppers, Cubanel peppers that I got from Ray, Japanese cucumbers, chili peppers. Everything's doing fantastic over here. Cherry tomato is really growing. The lemon cucumbers starting to trellis up just look fantastic. And again, a repeat of the same peppers, chili peppers, banana peppers, red bell peppers. And with the pumpkins over here, decided to do the same thing. I went to the Home Depot, got some electrical conduit. 
I got three foot rebar, which I drove a foot and a half to two feet of the rebar into the ground. I like it when things are nice and sturdy. Um, anyways, that's the high desert garden. That's how everything is doing. Over here, I've got some weeds, which I left in here intentionally. So that's the high desert garden. Uh, that's how I'm doing. I know I haven't been able to put out a lot of updates uh, recently. I've had a lot going on. I, when I'm not here at home working in my garden, I work as a trainer. I can't tell you the company that I work for because of the contract that I have, a uh, non-disclosure contract with the company. Um, so this time of year, as we're getting ready to release products in the fall, I am doing a lot of training. Um, so I've been very busy on top of that, discovering that my wife was pregnant. Um, so got a lot going on. and. I plan on bringing you guys more updates. I haven't given up on the Oyas. Still working on the Oyas. Uh, I just want to make sure that I have things right uh, before I bring you guys a video and, and let you guys know what's going on with those. So thanks so much for watching the High Desert Garden Show. See you guys next time.